in the example so far we have taken that the sales appear in the cash flow the same month that they were made however that doesn't happen in reality so to make the plan more realistic we're going to say that we get paid a month after the sale is made so to do this we link up our sales and our profit and loss projections for the entire year and multiply it by the seasonality factor of the previous month so our sales in month one will come true and be paid for in month two and the sales in month two in month three and so on so we staggered our cash flow and the sales figure in our cash flow as a result of that we have the sales that were made in month 12 but they haven't been paid they're not shown in the cash flow what we need to do is show these on our balance sheet so now we're going to create a new sheet and we're going to name it balance sheet On the balance sheet, we list everything that we own and everything that we owe. So it really is just a simple list. It's important that you keep track of anything that you've sold and you haven't been paid for by the end of the year and anything that you've bought but haven't paid for at the end of the year. So what we do is we lay out the three years, year ended year one, year ended year two and year ended year three and we start putting in what we own. We call what we own for more than a year that we'll use for more than a year fixed assets and if you remember from our assumptions our fixed assets are our computers and our office equipment. Below fixed assets, we put current assets. These are things that we own or are owed to us that will be realized in less than a year. So remember, we staggered the month's payment, so we're a month behind in our cash flow with our sales. Month 12. Is owed to us and we list that as debtors so we work out what month 12 would be and we put that in our balance sheet as debtors okay well we'll go back to the top now and look at our fixed assets fixed assets are what we own so how we show that in our balance sheet is we show the cost of the fixed asset that is how much we paid for the fixed asset when we bought it then we show the depreciation of the fixed asset and then we show the net book value which is the value at the time the balance sheet was created so let me show you how we do this we go back to our assumptions and look at our fixed asset purchases. You'll see in year one, we purchased fixed assets. So we put them in a balance sheet as the fixed assets as at cost. You'll see in our assumptions that we also worked out our depreciation. So we simply reference that cell in our balance sheet and it appears in our depreciation cell. And our net book value is simple sum, fixed assets at cost minus depreciation. And it's this net book value that we're going to use. We look at our current assets and our debtors, as you remember. 
So we ask ourselves, will we have any more current assets? No, not in these projections, we won't. So we move then to our current liabilities, which are things that we owe. Do we owe anything? Right. For this purpose, we're going to show our accounting and legal. Say, for instance, our accounting and legal, uh, we didn't pay it all up front, and we paid our accounting and legal, uh, say, we only pay... half of our accounting and legal. For the year. So our total accounting and legal is 9,000, but we only pay 4,500. We project that we'll only pay 4,500 in that year. That means that we owe accounting and legal expenses of the difference between what we paid and the services we used during that year. So if we look at our profit and loss account, we'll see that we use 9,000 euro of accounting and legal services, yet we only paid 4,500. So we still owe 4,500 of that. So we've just created a creditor because we didn't pay uh, the money, every, all the money up front. Uh, some of the services we haven't paid for until the following year. And it's important for you to go through each outflow and each expense and look at when you actually pay. Again, we've just shown that for the simplicity in this version, but um, it's important for you to find out yourself. Now, a cash, if it's a positive closing balance, it goes under current assets, as we've just shown. If it's a negative closing balance, it goes under current liabilities. It's important to realize that. So we're nearly finished our balance sheet now. And what we do is we, because we have two figures here under current assets, we add our current assets together to get our total current assets. And we just pop in a figure called total current liabilities, which is all our liabilities added together. In this case, we've only one, but we'll go ahead just for the format of the balance sheet. We'll go ahead and just insert a formula showing our total current liabilities. And now we're going to show our total net assets, which is our fixed assets plus our current assets less our current liabilities. So in the next video, we're going to look at the financed buy section of the balance sheet and we'll try and get our balance sheet balanced.